Did you know that the Adatore's family rival, the Pazzi, actually controlled the Villa Adatore at one point in real history? Well, sort of. Stay tuned to find out that and a whole lot more. Hey guys, it is Tyler here back once again with another episode of Assassin's Creed The Truth, the series where I look at the real histories of the Assassin's Creed franchise. Before we get started, be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel to get notified of when this series gets uploaded. I'd like to thank all of you who supported my first go at this concept revamping the series with my last episode on the history of the real life assassins. I worked really hard on that video and the response has been fantastic so far and I hope to see it continue to grow. I'm really rejuvenated with this series after a year long hiatus and making videos on real history in this way is what I'm going to continue to do. Which brings us to today's topic. We will be diving into a historical location or locations that are majorly prominent in the world of Assassin's Creed, specifically the Ezio Trilogy. That is the Tuscan town of Monteregioni and the Auditore family villa. We are going to be looking at its construction, town history and why it was built and its major differences to its depiction in the games. For those who may not know, Monteregioni was the main hub base of the Assassins and seat of the Auditore family in the world of Assassin's Creed during the Renaissance and plays a major role in the games Assassin's Creed 2 and Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. When looking at the real life history of locations, events and people in the Ezio trilogy, Monteregioni is a place that probably had the most liberties taken with it in terms of how it looks and what takes place there in real history. We see in Assassin's Creed 2, Monteregioni is the base of operations for protagonist Ezio Auditore to live and train throughout the story. In this town, there is also the Auditore family villa, built by Domenico Auditore, his great-great-grandfather. In Brotherhood, we see Monteregioni and the Auditore villa laid siege to by Cesare Borgia and the Papal Armies, where Ezio's uncle Mario Auditore is killed. Though Ezio then leaves for Rome, which becomes his new base of operations for many years to come, the Auditores remain caretakers of Monteregioni for the centuries that followed. We also see the modern day assassins use this town and ruin villa as a hideout in Brotherhood's modern day story arc. Now the reality of the town of Monteregioni is actually very different to how it is in the games, but just as interesting. First things first, if you were to see a photo or go to the town of Monteregioni, you'll notice that there is no Villa Auditore or anything that is even resembling it. This is mainly because the Auditore is not a real historical family and they certainly did not lord over the town of Monteregioni. The thing is, the Villa Auditore doesn't exist. Well, it sort of does, it sort of doesn't, it's, it's weird. The building that the Auditore Villa is based off of is a real place with a rich history of its own. It's actually called the Villa di Miano, a villa built in the 15th century located on the outskirts of Florence. So both Monteregioni and the villa from the game are based on real locations, but both have a sparsely different history. To start with, Monteregioni lies in the province of Siena and was built by the Sienese between the years 1213 and 1217 AD. The town was purposefully built to be a strategic fortress by the Sienese in their wars with Florence in the Middle Ages. The main resembling feature between the town of Monteregioni and the game's depiction of it is its outer walls. From the exterior you can see its impressive walls and towers which look remarkably close to the way the games depicted it. There are two gates in and out of Monteregioni, one faces south towards Rome and the other north towards Florence. Monteregioni stands atop a hill strategically located between two towns of Val d'Elsa and Stagia so that the Sienese could keep strong control of both of these towns and see any armies approaching Siena from the north. The town of Monteregioni is very small even when comparing it to its video game counterpart. However, it is still an attractive tourist spot to visit with hotels, restaurants and even a medieval armory you can tour through. One memorable feature of the games though is the Church of Santa Maria Assunta which you help reopen in Assassin's Creed 2. That church actually stands today in Monteregioni, built at the same time the rest of the castle town was built in a Romanesque Gothic style. So there certainly are some similarities from the real life town to the game. Though another missing feature however is the gardens of Monteregioni. Even today, as you walk through the streets of the town, you'll eventually find yourself walking through beautiful gardens which you do not see in the game's depiction of it. During medieval times, these gardens were used to supply food to the people of the town when it was under siege. An interesting fact about Monteregioni, 
It was a castle town never surrounded by water for its defense, but actually coal, which would be lit on fire if a siege were to incur. One siege, for example, depicted in the Assassin's Creed games was in January of 1500, when Cesare Borgia and the Papal armies laid siege to Monteregioni. In reality, this siege never happened. Cesare never attacked Monteregioni at all, and by all documented accounts, probably never even laid eyes on the town itself in his life. Siena held the town of Monteregioni for centuries after its construction. Through several siege attempts by Florence and the Medici family, the town held strong until the year 1554, which is probably the most significant event in the town's history. During that time, an ex-Florentine Giovanni Zetti was now a captain of the Sienese army and was in command of the garrison in the castle town of Monteregioni. When the town was attacked in August of 1554, Captain Giovanni Zetti chose his own life over those he commanded and the rest of the townspeople. Zetti betrayed his own army by letting the Florentine army enter, giving their commander the keys to the town. The Florentine army raised the Medici banner on St. John's Gate, took the townspeople as slaves, and finally claimed the town of Monteregioni for Florence and the Medici. The town, that up until that point had been impregnable, was finally taken not due to its failed defensive or strategic construction, but to political betrayal. Giovanni Zetti gave up Monteregioni in the hopes to gain his place in the good graces of the Medicis once again and return to his home of Florence. Giovanni Zetti is mentioned in the database entry of Assassin's Creed II and Identity as the keeper of the garrison at Monteregioni and a Florentine exile. He worked directly with the house out of Torre, and like in real history, betrayed the town and handed it over to the Florentine control. During my research, I found that there were many local rumors and stories about Captain Giovanni Zetti, and that his ghost still haunts the land, secreting remorse from its townspeople for his unforgivable betrayal. Some locals say on nights of the full moon, you can hear the trotting of horses and laments of Giovanni Zetti himself. Monteregioni's claim to fame doesn't just come from its depiction in Assassin's Creed games, though. It is famed for its mention in poet Dante Alighieri's Divine Comedy. Dante uses the towers of Monteregioni to evoke the sight of the ring of giants encircling the infernal abyss. As with circling round of turrets, Monteregioni crowns his walls. Eon thus the shore encompassing the abyss was turreted with giants half their length. Unrearing, horrible, whom Jove from heaven yet threatens when his muttering thunder rolls. There is a very different and rich history of the small Tuscan town of Monteregioni to its video game depiction. Probably none more so, though, than the Villa Adatore. Mostly for the fact that there is no noble Italian family named Adatore, and the villa does not actually even exist in Monteregioni at all. But the building the Villa Adatore is based off of is in fact a real place. The Villa di Miano was built in the 15th century and is located in the northeastern outskirts of Florence. It's worth noting that though Villa di Miano was what the Villa Auditorio is based off of, there are several major differences to it as well. Namely, though it is virtual, the Villa Auditorio does appear a bit larger than the Villa di Miano in real life. In its early history, the villa was battered by a hurricane in 1467. The entire complex then had to be sold by its original owner to cover his debts. In 1546, the villa came into the possession of a noble Florentine family, the Pazzi, a family very familiar to AC fans as the main rival family of the Adatores in Assassin's Creed 2. So not only did the Villa Adatore not exist, but the villa it was based off of was actually at one point owned by the rival Pazzi family. Now the Pazzi family has such a rich history in itself, and it's something I will definitely be covering in another episode in this series but there are a few things worth mentioning with their time as owners of the villa. For instance, it was in this villa in April of 1566, Caterina de Pazzi was born, also later famously known as Saint Mary Magdalene de Pazzi. Mary was a Carmelite nun and mystic, Carmelite being a Roman Catholic religious order. She was canonized as a saint by the Roman Catholic Church in 1668, 61 years after her death at 41 years of age in 1607. Saint Mary Magdalene de Pazzi became renowned for her first year as a novice nun when she became deathly ill. She seemed to have a bizarre grasp on her pain and suffering. When going through her illness, she was quoted in the book, My First Book of Saints, as saying, quote, Those who call to mind the suffering of Christ and who offer up their own to God through his passion find their pain sweet 
and pleasant, end quote. When the nuns thought that death was near for Mary, they held a private ceremony for her to make her profession of religious vows. Mary then entered what's described as an ecstasy for more than two hours. This event occurred for the following 40 mornings after communion. It was after these events that St. Mary Magdalene de Pazzi dictated the events of her ecstasies of which five volumes were made depicting her experiences. Mary was also known for her ability to read thoughts of those around her as well as predict future events. She even predicted the rise of one pope at one point. She's also alleged to have cured a number of sick people and appeared to several persons in distant places. One of the craziest things I found in my research is the claim that at her canonization in 1668, her body was declared miraculously incorrupt. Her corpse is now located in the monastery of Maria Maddalena de Pazzi in Caraggi in northern Florence, very close to her place of birth, the Villa di Miano. Yes, there are some massive differences in the real histories of Monteregioni and the Auditore family villa, but they are no less fascinating to me. Other than the lack of hooded assassins, of course. But these locations have historical significance and were places of some major events during the Renaissance and involve some key names and families that are strongly connected to the Ezio trilogy of Assassin's Creed games, including the Medici and de Pazzi families. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Assassin's Creed The Truth. I loved making the last episode with such a vast history to it, but I loved making this more obscure episode just as much. Getting to learn about things that are a lot more detailed and specific to a time and place was great fun. I look forward to bringing you more of these very, very soon. Again, thank you everyone for watching and thank you to our Patreon producers for making this video happen. I'll see you all very soon for more videos. Again, like this video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys next time.